As works of art, these landscapes may not look like anything special. There's usually a house, some trees, a lake. But these paintings once defined a city and dreams of generations past. I always considered Baltimore Outdoor Museum when, when I was young because everyone had a pretty, some type of scene. They are painted window screens, a unique folk art tradition going back 100 years, once seen on nearly every row house in the working class neighborhoods of Baltimore, Maryland. These were one ethnic enclave chock-a-block next to another. Little Bohemia was next to a German enclave, next to an Italian enclave. And the painted screen was just another way of saying, this is my home and I'm proud. This is a beautiful house, by the way. Notice sort of the, um, the, the redstone here. Baltimore native Elaine F. is the expert on painted screens. She founded the Painted Screen Society in 1985 wrote a book and produced a documentary on the little known folk tradition. Well, don't you think it's more attractive than an ugly old black screen, a dark yes. screen? And I think it's an art which you don't see anywhere else. And uh, when you have something like that, you feel proud about it, which I feel proud of East Baltimore. According to F, the mesh art started in 1913 with a grocer from former Czechoslovakia named William Oktovec. He would put his produce out on the street corner, and needless to say, in a Baltimore summer, it perished fast. And so he said, how am I going to show what I sell here but not put it outdoors? And so he painted a picture of the produce and the meats that he sold on his screen doors. The screens became art but with a purpose. While letting air flow through during the hot summer days, the paintings kept people from seeing inside. You had no trees. Cement, sidewalk, you know, streetcar lines running down the street, very, very few trees. So they wanted trees, they wanted a country scene. Tom Lipka is considered one of the last masters a 78-year-old retired technician for the Baltimore Department of Transportation. His passion lies in painting screens. Growing up in the city's Polish neighborhood, Lipka had an aptitude for art, and he began painting screens at the tender age of 10. And what would you get in the old days, back in the day, for one screen? When I first started, it might have been 50 cents a screen, which to me was big money. I see, like they couldn't see they in the house, in, but, but you, you can, see, can out. see out. You can just barely see a little hint. Right. Sylvia Chappelle Sherman grew up in the Row House neighborhood in the 1960s. Every house had the painted screens. You didn't always have swans and a lake, you know, or a little bridge, but you had little farmhouses. Some of them had chickens. She now has her own red bungalow part of an effort by Elaine F. and city officials to save this Baltimore tradition which started disappearing with the advent of the air conditioner. We're really losing the community because everything is being upgraded instead of trying to keep it. You know, and then they tear it down, and once they tear it down, it's gone. It's helping preserve this identity yes. of the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Baltimore's artists today are once again embracing the fading tradition, an authentic connection to the city's past. Now, the, the painters active today are painting less and less red bungalows. It's much more personalized scenes. So I think that something is definitely in the air. Tom Lipka is hoping to pass on the brush to the next generation. It's a very simple process. Anybody can do it. Really? Just so a any, very little anybody trick. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Now, I grant you, most people are not great artists. They'll never be in the big national museums, but that's not the idea. The idea of it is to have something that's going to last, something that people enjoy and will continue to enjoy long after the artist is gone. <laughs>